Hey, what's up, y'all? Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course. As you can see from the title of this video, uh, we're going to be talking about Destiny, the former cast member of Love and Marriage Huntsville. She actually did a sit down with podcaster Lateris Whitfield. His YouTube channel is called Dear Future Wifey, and they talked about a few things, including Destiny's childhood growing up in the foster care system, her big brother being unalived violently in Detroit. And definitely she talked about doing reality TV, her ex-husband LeBaric, and her ex Moses marrying one of the producers. Now, before we get into these topics, I ask that you all please hit the like button or even the dislike button um, on this video. By hitting those buttons, you actually cause YouTube to push this video out through its algorithm, meaning that it will recommend it to more people who love discussing the various topics surrounding Love and Marriage Huntsville. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit. I would love to have you. Now, also, the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these sound bites are allowed for criticism. All right. And everything that I'm saying here is my opinion and alleged. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this first sound bite that I'm going to play, it is surrounding um, Destiny when she gave birth to her son and she was married to LeBaric. And she talked about, you know, something that um, LeBaric would not do. And I'm just going to have that as my intro. I'll play the sound bite and then come back with my commentary. Prayer has got me to this point and a lot of therapy, a lot of life coaching. Um, specific therapy now is trauma-based, EMDR therapy to deal with yeah. the trauma. And because I had to go next level, regular therapy was good, but yeah. we need to go deeper. Because that relationship started to bring up old triggers and traumas from my childhood. Things that, you know, I wanted as a kid and didn't get, which was protection. I, I keep going back to that because I just, in some of the most vulnerable states of my life, being pregnant after five miscarriages and having this miracle baby and then walking out of the hospital with a $20,000 bill because my husband at the time refused to acknowledge me on his insurance. So those were, I mean, just the consistent. They refused to acknowledge you on the insurance. Explain that to me. We're talking about. So for punishment of not naming his son a junior, he refused to confirm me um, during discharge as his wife on his insurance. Okay, y'all. So I actually have questions for y'all because I do not have any children and I've never been married. So I don't know what it's like to have someone on your insurance. What I do know is that every fall I have to, you know, elect my benefits. So every fall, you know, I log in and that's where like if I was adding anyone to the insurance you know, that screen is available and I would type in that info. The reason why I bring that up is if, if LeBaric did that, well, he's not um, a W-2 employee. He is self-employed. So, um, but even if when he first set up his benefits, when he was married, wouldn't he have just added her just because? Because they were married, they were one to become one flesh. Like, the, what is this acknowledging her as being on his insurance at the time of discharge? Does she mean like when the hospital asked about payment, he just sat there, he did not hand them his insurance card? You know, it was, that story, is it was just told very strange. So I'm just wondering, you know, what is that like? So for any of y'all that are married and you and your spouses are on each other's uh, insurance, if God forbid either one of y'all had to go to emergency or, or if one of, you know, if you had a baby, how does that work? Like you don't have to show your insurance card. You just verbally say, yeah, she's on my insurance. I just thought like she told that very strange and I did not quite get it. And then um, in this next soundbite, now we've heard of, you know, um, 
you know, she did talk about like when she was on the Ooh Ladies First panel, that's back when like Bondi Blue, Jamie That's Me, Niecy Dixon and Jay Lee's Corner, when Jay Lee was on that panel, they interviewed Destiny. This was like a couple years ago. And um, she was saying that she could not talk about LeBaric on the show, but you know, she obviously talks about him during interviews. And according to her, allegedly, he doesn't even like for her to speak on him during interviews. Well, there was also the incident or the matter of, you know, she would try to refinance that property that sold in just her name because the house was just in his name. And she talked about why that refinance uh, did not work. In our, the only thing that I did ask for was, one year of him paying the mortgage on the home and I was refinancing the home in my name and um, I did, but he refused to give me the mortgage statement. But the story that's put out into the world is that I was squatting in my own home that I owned <laughs> and I wouldn't get out. And this man has supported me and did so much for me and I should be able to, you know, move forward. But I didn't think for a whole year that I would be in court. I was so, so, so you had an agreement to what you were supposed to move out after a year or I was gonna re I was either gonna move sell the home or refinance the home. And so I did refinance the home, but I, I the mortgage is in his name, All not right. mine. So I had to have because he had a VA loan, I had to have the mortgage statement in order to finalize the closing. Right. And we tried without it, but the underwriter just was like, No, we have to have it. And then He wouldn't he wouldn't give you the the no. mortgage statement? So I saw something one morning. So we're going to talk. Okay. So <clears throat> she was saying that she needed a mortgage statement to refinance. And so we all know that if you're purchasing or refinancing a home, that the underwriter will stipulate for documents. So my specialty when I was a loan officer was purchase. I did a lot of purchase business. But I imagine with the refinance, they would ask, the underwriter would ask for the mortgage statement so that they could verify the balance. Like as an example, if you owed 100000 on your mortgage, then the underwriter for the new refinance knows that you need to borrow at least 100000 And then with the refinance, you may take out a few thousand of Above that balance, maybe to cover your closing cost, or if you want a couple thousand in cash out, you know, to have a check made out to you at the closing. So, this is what I am baffled about. So, this is yet another soundbite when it comes to destiny. I'm left with questions. So, if it was in your divorce decree that you get to live in the home for one year and then you refinance, is he able to just withhold documents to allow her to refinance? He gets to meddle with her like that. If it's in the divorce decree, couldn't she have, I don't know, filed paperwork for him to be in contempt? Like he's holding up the refinance. He's making it difficult for me. Here's proof that the mortgage company is asking for a mortgage statement. He will not email it to me. Here's me texting him, asking him for it. Like she couldn't have gone through the court since it was in the divorce decree that after a year she would refinance because it is because after she said that I paused the video on YouTube, I thought to myself like, OK, for a refinance, you don't need as many documents as you do a purchase, but they would need that mortgage statement to verify the balance to, you know, to set the correct loan amount. So is he able to just withhold documents if it's in that divorce decree that she gets to refinance after a year? So uh, that is the question that I pose. And I know that Cinnamon Swirl, she's a subscriber who is an underwriter. If you're watching this Cinnamon Swirl, you know, like is because she said that she could not get around refinancing without that mortgage statement. So I'm pretty sure that that is a need. But I'm just wondering, like, if there's any lawyers out there, paralegals, anyone that would know, would he be able to stop her from doing something that is allowed per the divorce decree? All right, y'all. So in this last soundbite, Destiny talks about Moses and the producer, y'all. This is just like so... I was in such shock. I remember watching Queen Sheba's video. Shout out to Queen Sheba. That was some amazing 
tea. That tea was piping hot, uh, sweetened with honey, and it was non-caffeinated herbal tea, and it was even a latte. She added some dairy-free vanilla creamer to it, baby, and a little cinnamon. She was a barista that night with that tea, baby. And so I was in such shock. I was like, I, I don't even know what to do with this tea. So to actually hear Destiny talk about it, it is giving an episode from Sex in the City, but not one of the funny ones, one of the like pitiful ones, or that movie Bridget Jones' Diary, something like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna play the sound bite and then come back with my commentary. Well, um, yeah, with well, this show was a, a therapist. Yeah. So it's, it was a recent situation. I bring it up because it's very, very recent. Is imagine confiding in. The, the person that they have assigned to be your producer and then you find out that producer married your ex. Oh yeah, that, 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 that's a, it's not an imagine, that's not imaginary, that's actually what happened to you, Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually what happened to you, Destiny. So, uh, what, what? Is it, is it really? Is it really, did it really happen? Yeah, that, that happened, Destiny, um, last month, I believe. <laughs> last month, this guy that you was dating uh, is now married. Are they engaged? They just engaged, right? Um. But if they get married, I think they might be married. Okay, they might be married then. Married the producer, one of the producers of the show. I was assigned to you. How you feel about that? Well, being that she told me that was her cousin, it was really interesting to know that that cousins was married. And I, I know we filmed in Alabama, but uh. She didn't say that the dude was her cousin. She said she said that to you. So the thing that's crazy is that you know the, the job of a producer that's assigned to you, a film producer, is for them to you know you give them you confide in them. Yeah. Tell, and, and not only was she my producer, we actually became friends after she left the show. And um, <laughs> she would say things to me like when I would have those moments, like this is crazy, I'm sick of this, and. And she would say things like, you know, you know how many girls would, have, would love to be in your position and you know how many girls would love to be on television. And I didn't think she was talking about herself. The whole time, I'm like... Yes. And so, then when I found out the cousins got married... She did not I, say that was her cousin. She should have told you. So, did he say that was her cousin too? They, the, the word was, we people. Like, they, you know... They, they, uh, they like, I know, like, that's my people. Yeah, like we got cousins, and oh, so I'm thinking real, real, lit, for real, like real talk. Like I, in a million years, like I didn't know. And then I get a text message where it's like, "Hey, uh, out of respect for you and our friendship, and as a woman, I want to tell you that we we getting serious." I'm like, "When did you? Why are you and your cousin? When did y'all get? When did y'all even start dating? What are you talking about? Because of real talk, like I knew." That the man wasn't my husband. We had already broken up. Let's, let's let's say that I had already ended the relationship, and it was just a lot of things that were red flags, and I wasn't going back down that road again. And then a long distance on top of that. So, but you like a long distance relationship? Huh? I actually did because you know I like to be. I'm, like, I'm the only child. My dad's the only child, and so I'm used to after my dad got custody, we I'm, I'm used to being. But that's another story. And so the thing that about the whole situation. I've known that man for over 15 years. Yeah, but way back. Way back. And then I had to look at that relationship like, now these people are creating a storyline around me. This is my real you. life. Like, they're trying to like pitch a show, I think, or something. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. And then I, I go back to 15 plus years ago when I was dating someone that was actually a celebrity, a rapper, and off and on. And then that's when he first heavily pursued me. Oh, the guy started dating. Yeah, and then now here we are, fast forward, I'm on television and he's heavily pursuing me again. So then I had to think about what was the real intention? Like, were you ever who I thought you were? And what I can say about the situation is it is what it is. People find themselves in situations and they got nothing. I really do got a lot to do with me because it's a whole storyline. But uh, people be, people will create storylines around your reality and 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 use it for you know gain clout attention. How long y'all broken up at that point? Mm, probably about 
five months, maybe. And do you feel like it's betrayal on who part? His part or her part? Or both. both? Wow. Because I, you know, we got to, when I say we continue the relationship, I got messages in my phone. You know, I love you, sis, miss you, sis. You know, birthday, surprise birthday parties I was invited to by her sister. Like, things like that. So it was a developing relationship. And I confided in her about my relationship, not only as my producer, but as my friend. And, um, but the biggest betrayal is him. Because we had, I knew, like I said, I knew the relationship wasn't going where it needed to go as far as marriage or anything like that but that was still my friend so answer this okay so y'all heard that so i want to start from the end of the soundbite and work my way back so destiny was saying like she almost was saying like hindsight is 2020 and when she self-reviewed and thought about her ex-boyfriend she said that i've known him for 15 years and when i first met him 15 years ago allegedly she was dating a rapper and she said that you know he was pursuing her then and then years later i'm on a reality tv show and then he pops back up into my life. So she was low key calling him thirsty and, you know, like, oh, he's using me for a come up. You know, he's using me for clout. She said it without saying those words, you know, and um, I feel like so when it comes to reality TV stars, Number one, reality TV stars, they're not like movie stars, right? They're not like Denzel Washington or Angela Bassett. And then with reality TV stars, there's like different levels to it. You know, there's the Tammy Romans and the Nene Leakes. And then there's the, you know, Candy Burris Tucker and Melody Cherie Rogers. And then there's like, um, you know, who else? I would say on another level, I guess like Portia Williams, um, Rashida from Love and Hip Hop, and you know, somewhere down there is like Destiny. So I don't know if that guy, if he was like dating her both times for come up or for some attention. I mean, she didn't elaborate when she was dating the rapper, but did like Moses ask her if she could get him a job interview with the rapper? Or, you know, did he ask, could he meet the rapper, get, get invited to some parties? Like, how were you the plug exactly? You know, and then even now, well, I guess now, you know, I guess she was the plug, the plug to his, to his future wifey. <laughs> but um, also, she said that a field producer's job is to get the talent comfortable enough to confide in them and um, she just almost she almost made that seem like that was kind of like a plot to kind of get in and, and get the guy. And then she said that she was notified, like, right, I guess, leading up to the wedding or something that they let her know. And, um, you know, yeah, I always I'm always left with more questions than answers when it comes to destiny. But I just thought it was so interesting. Like now she's just like, you know, a Kathy Chatterbox, because when she was on the reality TV show, what was so infuriating with her? Now, the way that destiny differs from the Scots is that with the Scots, I feel like they just straight cap about their reality on a reality TV show. With Destiny, it was always a question mark. She was always mums the word. And I like to consider myself an understanding person. Had she said that her ex-husband never wanted her to talk the specifics on the show, I would have understood that. But say that in one of your confessionals. Clarify that. Be explicit about it at one of the reunions. My goodness. But then she waited several seasons and then said it on the old lady's first panel. And it, by that time... I was over destiny. I felt like, you know, she's just collecting a paycheck and she doesn't share anything. Like, who is she? And it wasn't until um, she fell out with Tiffany and then they had a scene where the two of them met at like a supper bar and they were sitting at the bar and um, they both confided about growing up in foster care. So then that was when I learned a little bit more about destiny. 
And then when she was on the Ooh Ladies first panel, that's when I realized that she spent part of her childhood in Detroit. And, you know, and she talked more about growing up in the foster care system. And she goes more into detail during this interview with Lateris Whitfield. So if, you know, you want to hear about, you know, a childhood and experiencing being taken away from a parent who, you know, allegedly struggled with a substance abuse and just having those memories. Um, definitely, you could check that out. I'm going to post the link to this episode of the Dear Future, Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'll post it in both the comments as well as the description box, but um, you can definitely check it out. Um, it, it's pretty long, so you can check it out like while you're fixing dinner or setting up laundry. Then it is something that you can have on, you know, while you knock out those those items on your to do list. All right, so yeah, definitely let me know in the comments what do you think about the things that she said about Leberic, you know, interfering with the refinance allegedly, and you know her speaking on the on the Moses and the producer love situation. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your support when you do. It means so much to me. Please hit the like button on this video and please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit. We have made it through the majority of the work week. I am delighted. Tomorrow is Thursday. It is going to be a thriving Thursday. It's going to be awesome. And if you did not have the best day today, I'm sorry to hear that. But I know that tomorrow will be much better for you. All right. So I will talk with you all soon. Bye.